For this lesson, let's look at a little program that will teach the robot how to find its way through a maze. The main program, as you see here at the top, consists of two subroutine calls. It initializes the maze and runs the maze. Initialize the maze is down here at the bottom, at least the top of it. We'll come back and look at that in a moment. First, Let's insert an end statement right here so that instead of trying to run the maze, all it does is just initialize the maze. If we run the program now, we can see the maze that's going to be run. Actually, the entire maze won't fit in our small window. But I can slide it here and let you see the entire thing. Let's go back and see how this maze is created. Remember the init maze subroutine does all the work for us. So let's pull that up a little. Slide my window down. The init maze subroutine does its job by simply creating some lines and rectangles some of the lines are very wide, 95 here to draw the actual lines. We're not going to go through all of these pieces, but one of the things you can do is simply insert an end statement after each line and watch how each section draws one piece after another. Now at the very end here of this subroutine, you'll notice that we're locating the robot and then we're making dark gray invisible. That's because we're drawing this rectangle, these rectangles, the maze itself, in the dark gray color. Normally, when we would run a maze, the robot would use external feelers. Since the CSTAM robot, at least at the moment, does not have these, we're going to use the line sensors to try to run this maze. Also, I've got an R slip here at the bottom. We've not used that before. Robots actually tend to drift left and right. They don't move in a straight line. They don't make the proper turns because of the differences in friction, the differences in the type of motors and so forth. Our slip, in this case, adds 10% error to the robot's movement. You can change this to 20% error, 5% error, whatever. And we'll talk about this more in a later video. In order to run this maze, we can take out the end statement and then the go sub run maze. Now in run maze, we're going to have the robot move forward until it's blocked. That's done with this subroutine down here. Let's look at that in a little more detail right now. Basically, it's a loop that continues as long as the robot has not moved into an object, as long as it's not blocked. We're using the R sense, which is the line sensors underneath the robot. And as long as those are zero, then we've not ran into anything. As long as that's true, we want to continue to move forward. Remember, the whole idea is to move forward until blocked. But if we run into a real object that is not that dark gray color, but a real object, then we want to stop. So we say if our bumper equals zero, then we move forward. So if the bumper actually bumps into some real object in the simulation, then the robot will stop. That allows it to stop at the end of the maze because we have a black line across the outside opening. Now we go back up to our run maze subroutine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go forward till we're blocked using the subroutine we just saw. And then if we get blocked, we're going to back up a little bit and then turn 20 degrees to the right. All right, let's watch this now and run the program. The robot's moving along. Notice how it backs up and then turns right. Let's move it over so we can watch it finish. And when it hits the black line at the end, it stops. Now the key things in this algorithm is that it's backing up when it hits an object and turns. 
if it was using the external sensors to feel its way around, backing up is very important. But I want you to try different numbers here. Use numbers from 0 to minus 40. Have it back up a whole lot or back up very little using 0. And then on the turn, I want you to try different numbers here. Would it be better to have your robot turn a very small degrees, maybe 1 or 2 degrees? Or would it be better to turn a lot, maybe 80 degrees? So your assignment is to take this program and modify it and try to make it work the best you can. We're going to have a discussion online. And once you've tried all these numbers, I want you to tell people what numbers you thought were the best and why. In other words, was it better to have minus 10 or 0? Was it better to have 80 degrees or 10 degrees? And try to describe what happens when you use these different ones and why you think your numbers are the best.